Hello, and welcome to South Pack. In this segment, we are taking a look at the Pelican 1630 protector case. The 1630 is a large, ruggedized shipping case that is too large and heavy for airline travel and is best used for ground freight. This slide shows an overview of the features and size statistics of this case. Features such as double action latches, pressure valve, O-ring, steel pin hinges, retractable handle, air and water type performance, and a lifetime warranty are included in all rolling cases in the Pelican Protector family. In particular, the 1630 case features seven latches, two wheel cartridges containing two wheels each, and two fold-down lifting handles on the ends. Due to its size, Pelican has added features not found on smaller cases in this product line, such as shear locks and structural plastic in the corners. In this video, we will be talking a lot more about these case features and also about the internal case dimensions. The internal dimensions listed are taken at the lid split, which we will see later is not the last word on actual usable space. Also listed here is the external dimensions and the weight of 31 pounds. The reason we have listed total dimensions is that this is pertinent along with weight for freight cost. Let's take a closer look at the external features. This slide shows the front of the case and several external features. This case has two locking loops, one at the top is labeled and one at the bottom. These are covered in metal sleeves that provide extra security. It is a little cumbersome to use two locks, but using one could allow someone to pry up the opposite corner and gain access to the case. There are three of the double throw latches on the front of the case which are protected by ribbing. Also shown here is the nameplate provision. A nameplate is an optional item from Pelican, but you can also use your own stickered or placard here. One of the three anti-shear locks is shown in the center of the case. This feature helps keep the lid and base firmly together during rough treatment. Lastly, the automatic pressure relief valve is also on the front of the case. Since this case is airtight, this feature is needed to equalize the pressure inside the case when changing altitude. This is a picture of the back or hinge side of the case. The three hinge assemblies are molded in plastic with protective ribbing surrounding a metal pin. In older versions of this case, the metal pin was easily replaceable in the field. On this version, it is still replaceable, but requires some drilling of the plastic on the ends. If this were to break, your best bet might be to use Pelican's warranty for a new case. Lastly, this slide also shows some of the texture of the plastic skin. The texture provides a decent scratch-resistant outer surface, which keeps the case looking good longer. This shows a close-up of the wheel end of the case. There are two latches and one fold-down lifting handle on this end. The fold-down handle is oversized and is secured to the case with metal pins. There is another handle on the opposite end, and the case is generally configured for a two-person lift. The wheel design on this case is much improved from earlier versions. The most likely thing to break on any rolling shipping case is the wheels. Pelican has not only made the wheels longer lasting by putting them in protective housings, they have also made them easier to replace in the field. If a wheel gets damaged, the housing can be easily removed and replaced without damaging the rest of the case. In addition, by using four instead of two wheels, the case rolls easier and the wheels last longer by having less weight on each one. The top of the case shown here has a few features worth noting. Pelican adheres a product and logo sticker on the top of the case. This is easily removable by the purchaser and provides a good spot for private branding or your own identification labels. The plastic ribbing shown at the top and bottom add structure to the lid and also serve as part of the stacking provision. Also shown is the extra molded plastic protecting the corners of the case. Here we have a picture of the bottom of the case. The square and rectangular protrusions that run down the sides serve two purposes. Firstly, they protect the retractable handle assembly, and secondly, the squares fit into the ribbing on the top of another 1630 case for secure stacking. The handle assembly, like the wheels, is easily replaceable if it gets broken. The handle itself has a two-position lock, either all the way down or all the way up, and as an added bonus, the handle can be unlocked and lifted up with one hand. It's time to start talking about the case interior and dimensions. This picture shows a top view of the case base. As you can see, there are protrusions on the left from the inset wheel cartridges and a protrusion on the right for the retractable handle. Also shown is the raised structural ribbing inside the bottom of the case. Let's take a closer look at some dimensions. Here we have a CAD rendering of the case base interior. The dimensions at the top of the case, as we stated earlier, are 28.77 by 21.77 inches. The same dimensions at the bottom of the case are 27.98 by 20.96 inches. The reason the case is smaller at the bottom is due to what we call the case draft. The case base is molded in one piece 
and it has to be narrower at the bottom so that the part will release from the mold. In this instance, the case draft subtracts around one inch from the usable length and width at the bottom. In addition to the case draft, the wheel and handle protrusions also decrease usable space at the bottom, and this may come into play if you are packing up big, long, or several odd items. This slide shows a bisected view of the case with the lid on it. The 15 and a half inch stated case depth is made up of a base depth of 12.25 inches and a lid depth of 3.25 inches. As you can see, the overall usable depth is less than the 15 and a half inches in several areas of the case due to protrusions. The dimensions of the wheel wells and handle well protrusions are shown, as well as the eighth inch height of the bottom ribbing we discussed. At the top of the case, we are showing the protrusions from six plastic nubs called risers and the inside corner protection ribbing. The risers are left over from the molding process of the lid. The good news on these is that they can be removed easily with a putty knife and hammer without damaging the lid. The corner tech protection cannot and should not be removed. Thank you for your time today. I hope this was an informative video. If you'd like to get a copy of these slides, please contact us and we will be happy to provide them to you. Also let us know if you have any other questions or if you would like to purchase a case or discuss a custom interior. Thanks again.